Okay, so we now go to the um, chapter 12, which is problem solving and uh, creativity. So, these are some of the focus questions I will try to answer. Uh, the first being, um, what makes uh, some problems difficult? And then, how can analogies be used to help solve problems? Then, next up, we'll try to answer how do experts in a field solve problems differently from the non-experts. And lastly, what are some of the things that creative people do differently than the non-creative people? Mm. Okay, so when we say that um, it is a problem, it is something wherein uh, there is an obstacle between the present state and the goal and it is not immediately obvious how to get around that uh, obstacle so this is where in um like for example the pino problema mo kung paano ka makaka uh, punta dun sa lugar na dapat mong puntahan kasi unang una uh, you don't know the um uh, you don't know how to get there or the the place is not familiar to you and then of course um pangalawa you don't uh, have any means or you don't know what means of commute you're going to do in order to get there because you don't have um extra money for grab or for angkas para yung derecho kang ihatid doon so that is a problem so we're in Nakikita natin, there is an obstacle between the, the present state and the goal of that person. Wherein, the present state is that um, you don't know where, how to get to that place. And the goal is you need to get to that place. Okay, so there are some approaches uh, in understanding or how to... Uh, so problem. So the first one would be yung Gestalt law. Um, so I turn naman ulit ang mga Gestalt wherein they have this law of perceptual organization. So they have seen um, in, in terms of problem solving first of they have seen how people represent the problem in their mind. So more or less we have uh, as according to them we have this visualization of the problem in our mind and then next is how solving problem involves reorganization or restructuring of that representation so um with that being said uh, basically their idea is that we have this picture of the problem in our minds and then to be able to um address the problem or resolve the problem we try to restructure it so like for example yung um alam niyo yung game na parang shuffle mo yung mga letters so pretty much that's how the gestalt sees um the our approach to problem solving uh ano ba to yung parang mga word games uh, i'm not sure the particular name of that but then diba uh, bibigyan ka ng um randomly arranged na letters and then you're going to make up words using the letters the the randomly arranged letters so basically um this is the 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 first time that you see it that is the representation of the problem in your mind. What are the words that I can make out of this randomly arranged letters? And then, um, gumare na naubos mo na yung all possibilities. Wala ka nang makita. You, wh what we do next, usually in those types of games, is to restructure the randomization ng uh, mga letters na, na una nating nakita. So, pretty much, um, it gives us another option or another uh, uh, another view on how to look at that um, uh, same set of letters and come up with another or new words from that se same set of letters. So, I hope you're getting this ha, kasi again, it's the, the last few chapters are quite difficult to discuss 
ng walang hawak na white, uh, whiteboard marker and not writing it down on the whiteboard marker. Uh, on the whiteboard, rather. Okay, so... So, we have, uh, with this one, we have the representation of the problem in mind. Ayan, tulad nga nung sinasabi ni Wolfgang Kohler. Um, di ba yung mga math problems natin, di ba kaya siya may mga, ano, may mga uh, pictures or diagrams because it's easier to really understand the problem if it's presented in that way. Kasi it's quite... Um, it's it's not easy to uh, imagine a circle uh, and then with uh, uh, our radius, diba? So, and then, tat tatanungin, ano yung length ng x and uh, circle if the radius is r, diba? So, medyo, <laughs> as a fifth slide pa lang tayo, pero dumudugo na ilong nyo. So, we'll, we'll not really linger on this example because I know everyone here is not really that fond or that uh, fun of math. So, particularly me, baka pag trinay ko pang i-explain to using this example, mas lalo kayong malito. Okay? So, um, katulad yan na sinabi ko earlier, we have to restructure or we have to shuffle the letters in order for us to look at it in another way and um, help us to come uh, to be able to come with new uh, words um, based on how we uh, on the the new structure or the restructuring of this same. Uh, problem. So, it's the same problem set pa rin naman. We're just looking at it in a different way. So, um, in the study of uh, Janet Metcalf and uh, David Weave, um, there is a distinguishing uh, feature between an insight and non-insight uh, problems. So, <clears throat> particularly that uh, there should be a difference in how subjects feel when they are progressing towards a solution with insight problems. So, basically, they were able to see that pag, ayun, medyo, uh, medyo na re-resolve mo na or medyo malapit ka sa solution dun sa problem na um, uh, tinatry mong bigyan ng solution, the, there is this sense of feeling that is changing na parang ay ayan na malapit nang matapos to um there is diba, which is true naman diba we're in in fact when you are taking exams right so when you're taking exams there's this feeling na hala ayan na malapit na ako matapos nasa pang uh, 90 na, nasa 90 na ako na item so 10 na lang malapit na tapos na tong exam na to and then uh, with that one uh, the that feeling um affects how the person uh, work on the problem so from their study they have seen that um the the uh, the respondents make warm judgment every 15 seconds as they work on the problems um and this shows whether they are close to the solution or not <clears throat> So, with the insight problems, uh, subjects should not be good at predicting how near they are to the solution. So, ito yung, um, tama ba yung sinagot ko? Or, um, may something wrong sa sinagot ko? So, you, you cannot really know um, if uh, you are near to the solution or not. That is with the insight problem. With the non-insight problems, um, this is more on the methodical processes wherein you know that you are getting close to, to the solution. So like for example, math problems, that is a non-insight problem, particularly because uh, it follows a process and then pag nakuha mo na si X or si Y or si Z or si A, si B or si C, you already know that uh, it's... Um, Kapag katapos na yung problema, you're there na kuha mo na ano yung hinahanap ng problem. So, with uh, this study, 
or with this type of different uh, problems we see the uh, the difference in terms of how we know when we are getting to the solution or getting close to the solution or not <clears throat> Okay. Now, of course, there are obstacles to our problem solving. Ito yung mga um ito yung mga factors kung bakit hindi natin nasasagot agad yung mga um mga uh yeah, mga problems or mga questions that we are faced with. So, first off is the fixation. So, this is the tendency to focus on specific characteristics of the problem that keeps them from arriving at a solution so like for example you have um for for the exams for the upcoming exams you have seen that uh parang you notice na merong uh, pattern yung sagot doon sa uh, midterm exam nyo so you would be trying to look at that particular pattern of um answers in your final exam however however it turns out that your exam that the final exam was made by three people and the midterm exam was only made by one person so kumbaga you're fixated on um, the specific characteristic of that exam from your previous experience however it was not applicable to the final exam so that fixation had been giving you a hard time to really focus on the individual items and answer it depending on what you know um, based from the question <clears throat> okay and then of course we also have functional fixedness which focuses on familiar functions or uses of an object so like for example uh ito madalas tong nangyayari sa akin uh like for example um pag pag nakikipaginom muna ako sa mga friends ko so minsan nakakalimutan ko magdala na ano ng uh ng uh bottle opener so syempre ang oh, problema ko di mabuksan yung beer sabi ko ate ka lang teka lang Tapos, um, the first time that I saw a spoon being used to open uh, the bottle of beer, ang sabi ko pa doon sa kasama ko, bakit mo gagamitin niya kutsara ay hindi naman yan para doon. So, uh, what I had during that situation or during that moment was functional fix fixedness. Um, I was focused on the spoon being use as a means to shovel in the food inside the mouth um, and not something that can help open up uh, bottles so kumbaga dun ako naka ano i didn't look at the the spoon uh, in an in a creative manner so we'll talk about creativity in a bit no um kasi nga i was having functional fixedness Hmm, teka lang, nag siya. Okay. Now, um, Carl Dunker had introduced to us the candle problem wherein um, the subjects were asked to use various objects to complete the task, um, to mount uh, the candle on the cork board and burn uh, without dripping wax on the floor. So, uh, they were given materials um, uh, and uh, some people have used the match box as a support rather than the container um, and then uh, from the same problem Robert Robert Adamson had uh, changed it up for a bit and he had given the subjects um two more uh or presented them with uh, empty boxes instead um and then uh, he had seen from his findings that the uh, respondents or the subjects were twice likely to solve the problem unlike the original na design okay now with mayor we have the 
two string not staring and dami kong typo problem wherein the person who needs to tie uh, two strings hanging from the ceiling so um, the solution for this problem is to tie the pliers to one string to act as a pendulum and this is functional uh, fixedness um, mm -hmm. So, with that functional fixedness, um, some of the respondents or some of the subjects were not able to really solve the problem. And um, when, but when Meyer accidentally brushed the string, um, this triggered an insight that the plier can, could be used as a way to create the pendulum. And uh, when he did that around uh, a big number, about, I think this is about. 90-80% was able to solve the, the, the string the two string problem <clears throat> okay so when we are given mental set um, this pertains to um, the notion perceived notion about how to approach a problem and this is usually determined by experience. Now, um, if you have gone to the, you mga escape room, you mga yeah, you mga escape room. Um, <laughs> I went, I went with a couple of my friends in in Singapore uh, in escape room there. Uh, this the escape room that we had was ano Doraemon Doraemon team. We're not able to. <laughs> we're not able to escape the room because, um, tatlo sa mga kasama ko ay QA analyst. So, uh, and then of course I'm a psychologist. All of us have this. Uh, from from what we're or uh, applying the concepts here, uh, all of us seem to have functional fixedness. So we're not really able to <laughs> to really solve the problem inside the room. We keep on calling for the for the ano ba to? for the clue. Hangga sa maubos na yung clue namin at saka maubos na yung mga yung yung time namin. Hindi kami nakalabas ng room. Um this is because we also have this mental set na um I can solve this using only this kasi nga this is um, based on our experiences so just like with that experience in the escape room where in most of the time you really need to deal with the problem or uh, you to be able to escape you have to um, you have to apply creativity in order to escape the room <clears throat> and then we have um, to show this one we have Luchin's uh, water jug problem wherein uh, they are given um, three jars to attain the desired volume so uh, with a jar a they have like 21 parts of water or liquid or whatnot um, and then B is 27 quarts and C is three uh, quarts so the desired is to have um, 100 quarts so it's going to be B minus A minus 2C. So, ito, ito yung mga algebra problems. <laughs> so, the desired quantity is equals to A plus C. Uh, another um, 8 uh, is uh, for the desired quantity, it's A minus C. So, the mental set group uh, solve the first one and then continue to uh, the 2, 8. <clears throat> Um, however, from the study, they were able to see that subjects established the mental set for using B minus A minus 2C. And this is from what they have done uh, first before. So, um, and indeed, the mental set that we have or the way that we solve uh, the problem is based on our experience, our, uh, uh, the experience that we have. Okay, so what is the, the modern research on problem solving or information processing approach? So, 
So Alan Newell and Herbert Simon have this logic theories computer program for problem solving. We're in um, a, a good a good example for this would be that Tower of Hanoi problem. Ito yung parang mga rings. Tapos you're going to uh, put them uh, to the other ano other peg. Kasi tatlong peg yun di ba? So, ililipat mo sila in that particular uh, having the same particular setup. So, um, with their approach, they have what they call initial state uh, which is the condition that um, that is the beginning of the problem and then, then the goal state would be the solution of the problem. So, Ang rules nung ano nung Tower of Hanoi problem is to move one ring at a time and you can only move the top disc and then the larger disc cannot be on top of the smaller disc so may may ganun siyang ano so that particular problem has or it involves a series of choices of steps and then um <clears throat> so dun nila nakita yung means and analysis wherein it reduces the difference between the initial and goal states so nangyayari yon habang ayun nililipat na nga yung mga rings following the uh the rules that were established and then, in doing so, sub-goals are also uh, established wherein these are the intermediate states that uh, are closer to the goal. Like for example, uh, itong unang ring dito ko ilalagay, itong pangalawang ring dito ko ilalagay kasi nga bawal yung ano. So that is a sub-goal. So saan ko ilalagay? Kailangan mailagay ko siya dito para hindi papatong yung bigger ring dun sa smaller ring. So those uh, those are the things that you can see in doing the Tower of Hanoi problem. <clears throat> Okay, so aside from this one, we also have to understand how the problem is stated. So, this is another uh, problem, per se. Um, we have a mutilated checkered uh, board problem, which has 64 squares, and dominoes cover two squares in... Um, in different colors you have to eliminate two so the corner of the checkboard which are the same color we can cover the remaining squares with 31 dominoes um, so yun. okay again this is quite difficult to explain without the uh demonstration or picture Okay, so this is the Tower of Hanoi problem uh, in a figure. So, yan. Diba? So, tatlo yung peg. Tatlo rin yung disc. Ito yung initial state niya. Ang kailangan mailipat mo siya sa dulo. So, rule number one, you have to move one disc at a time from one peg to another can only move the this only when there are no this in it and then rule number three larger this cannot be put on the top of the smaller disc so so paano mo siya gagawin diba okay so this one this shows us the <clears throat> the uh, approach from the initial state to the goal state Paano mo siya gagawin? So, ito. Ito yung mga first na pwede mong gawin for that. Yan. Hanggang sa makapunta ka dito. So, these are all the possibilities. Yan. However, not all possibilities 
are the shortest path. So, there are possibilities here um, na mas longer siya. So, katulad ito, itong red line, ito yung longer path. Whereas, with the green line, makikita nyo dire-diretso lang siya. Ang red line kasi, ang dami niya pang ikot bago siya makarating dito. So, basically, nagano na siya. Um, ilang ano yan? Kasi marami siyang inikutan pa bago pa siya makarating dun sa goal state. Okay. So, analogy is uh, using solutions to a similar problem to guide a solution of a new problem. So, this is more of analogical um, problem solving. Ito yung ano, uh, magbibigay ka ng ano, <clears throat> Yung, you're using the same pattern of um, solution for a similar problem. So, like, for example, ito kasi yung ginagawa ko usually sa mga class ko, especially yung classes na parang sobrang technical, I use analogy in order to simplify the explanation. So, like, for example, in my app site, so sinasabi ko sa kanila, in, in diagnosing, you have to uh, see this, see this, blah, 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 blah. So, I told my class, basically, that diagnosis is not really uh, a cookbook recipe na kailangan. So, it's, a, it's an analogy in that sense na um, I focus on not the similarity, but more on uh, there are certain steps, but not uh, not to the point that you have to follow uh, the certain uh, this the the specific or the steps rigidly. So ganon ko siya inexplain sa kanila. Okay. So we also have this one analogical transfer, wherein um, the problem, uh, yeah, we transfer from one problem to another, and then the target problem, what the the problem, the main problem that the person is trying to solve, like for example the checkered board problem. And then next is um, the source problem. So, so this one is another problem, but this one shares similarities uh, with the target problem that illustrates a way to solve the problem. So, like for example, the Russian marriage. Okay, so for um, another problem was uh, the radiation problem wherein uh, there is a, that's a uh, what do you call this, a tumor patient that needs a, a ray to destroy the tumor. However, this is the, um, this is the, the, the problem in this specific uh, situation. The high ray destroys the healthy cells. Um, while the low ray does not affect the tumor at all. So, how are you going to um, help the patient if that is the rays uh, that can be only used? Okay. So, from that particular problem, about 10% of the subjects only 10% of the subjects have arrived at a correct solution. So, the correct solution for that one is to bombard the tumor with low-intensity rays from different directions. So, that's the correct um, solution for that. So, if you're thinking, um, I don't know what to do because the, the low tumor doesn't really, uh, the low ray doesn't really do anything for the tumor whatsoever. And then the high ray will affect the 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 healthy um, 
the healthy cells in the body so i, I don't want to affect it etc etc so pretty much there is a fixed uh, function uh, if that, that's how you were um trying to resolve that problem there is a thing fixed functionality if you have been thinking like that and then we also have this one general the fortress story so general dispatching small groups of an army to avoid the mines so after fortress story about 30 percent were uh, able to solve the radiation problem after hearing this one the the fortress the fortress story um when they were asked to think about the the story the fortress story before uh, giving a solution to the tumor uh, problem uh, the success rate was about 75 percent so it it got higher so uh this is a good example of you how to use analogy to uh, solve problem uh, we're in um we have seen that the the fortress story seems to be similar with the um with the two more problem so what are the process of analog uh, analogical problem solving so there are three steps for that one so noticing um wherein you get to see the uh an analogous relationship between the source problem and the target problem so nakikita mo yung pagkakaparehas nila somehow or yung association nila at some uh, at some level or at some point um and uh, it's a it's one that's a bit difficult from uh, uh from the three steps to notice that one kasi nga if you're really bad at noticing it it would be yeah it, it would, you would have a hard time to understand how the two relate to each other then mapping would be the correspondence between the source story and the target problem and uh, with the map parts of the story um, to the test problem by connecting the elements of the source to the target problem so just like with the two more and the fortress story uh, if the if they dispatch all of the army then definitely it will activate a whole lot of mine um, but if they dispatch uh, the army by group by smaller groups then the possibility of uh, stepping onto the mines will be smaller so in the in the same manner na parang ganun din si si ano si mm, two more problem wherein the high ray can affect uh, the healthy cells so it will not be, be uh, it will not be good to use whereas with the low ray um it can still be used yun nga lang uh, hindi ganun ka effective unlike the high ray so you have to uh, apply it in different direction for it to have a higher level of efficacy and then the third step would be applying so applying would be the uh, generating parallel solutions to the target problem so just like uh, how the fortress story was able to uh, resolve the problem um yung uh, hindi nga pag activate ng mine and then how the tumor problem was also resolved by uh, applying the low ray in uh, different directions do on sa tumor uh, cell okay now we also have this concept of surface features were in this uh, this is uh, per or this pertains to the specific elements of a certain problem <clears throat> so So what there is the effect of um, making surface feature more similar like for example with the light bulb problem so the light bulb problem you have this light bulb where in um, the filament is no longer working so if you have seen a light bulb meron siyang ano yung mga wires tapos parang may nagko-connect sa kanya para mag-create ng ilaw um 
I, I don't know if you have tried to see what's inside a light bulb. Pero yun yung filament, yung nagpapailaw mismo doon. So, and uh, use laser beam to fuse the two parts of the filament into one. So, high intensity uh, beam would break the uh, fragile glass surrounding f the filament and the low intensity would not break the glass. So, um, so it is uh, for this light bulb problem, we can see that the surface features of the problem is similar to the radiation problem or the tumor problem, diba? Na parang, um, meron kang kailangang uh, apply yan ng, ng beam or ng uh, ray or what not, pero pag sobrang taas, hindi siya or kumbaga, it's going to affect something else na hindi dapat maapektuhan. Pag sobrang baba naman, um, hindi, kumbaga, it's not that the, the efficacy is not that high or is not that um, favorable as the or yeah the efficacy will not be that good if you would think about it no so since there are similarities or the surface features are similar ayan uh, the subjects, 81 of the, 81 percent of the subjects who know about the radiation problem have solved the light bulb problem. Kasi nga, the similarity was there. We also have the effect of varying structure, uh, structural features um, in using the analogy. So, the structural features, these are the underlying features. A principle that governs the solution so like for example the strong rays or the laser um, eh, which destroys the tissue or the light bulb so that is the st structural feature of the two of the problems so we have a strong ray the onset tumor problem and the laser for the light bulb problem and then this one uh, tissues or yeah the yeah yeah the, the cells uh, the healthy cells uh, for the tumor problem and then the light bulb in the light bulb problem so keeping surface features constant um, <clears throat> like with the source problem which is the light bulb and then the target problem which is the radiation so um, in the source problem one, in the fragile uh, glass version, about 69% have solved the radiation problem. When uh, when the surface feature is different, and the source problem two, insufficient intensity version, ganun ang ginawa nila, imbis na yung isa ay uh, fragile and then glass version na um, yung sinabi nila or yung in-emphasize nila na features and then yung number 2 na source problem uh, insufficient intensity yung hinighlight nila na uh, pag ito ginamit mo mababasag or maapektuhan yung healthy uh, tissues pag mababa ginamit mo wala naman siyang effect sa, sa tumor um, the, in the same manner na yun nga yung laser if it's a high laser beam then the glass will break if it's a low laser beam um, it doesn't do much it doesn't break the the glass but it doesn't really do much so in the insufficient uh, intensity version only 33 percent have solved the radiation problem because of um hindi ganon kataas ang similarities nung surface feature nila so in the analogical transfer there is an improvement by making the structural features of the source and target problems more similar as we have seen in source problem number one na Pag um, ito yung ginamit mo, the healthy tissues are going to be affected. Pag ito yung ginamit mo, wala naman siyang effect sa tumor. Ni with the light bulb, ba ang sabi niya, pag ginamit mo yung high laser, um, the glass will break. So, technically, wala ka na yung light bulb. 
And then, pag low naman, wala siya masyadong impact uh, na uh, mangyayari. Pero hindi mabawasan yung light bulb. So, pretty much, mas, uh, mas, uh, mas mataas ang similarity ng features na yun kesa sa uh, the, the second version. Okay, now when we do analogical encoding, this is the process by which two problems are compared and the similarities between them are de uh, determined. So just like with the, um, the tumor problem and the light bulb problem. So in uh, Gentner and Golden Meadow uh, uh, so study, there they were able to uh, see that it's possible to get the subjects to discover the similar structural features of two problems. So they were given two cases wherein. Um, it illustrates a principle of negotiation. So, the first one, negotiation strategies, uh, is a trade-off wherein I will give you A if you give me B, uh, which is a contingency wherein the person gets what he or she wants it if something else happens. Uh, the second one, one group given trade-off solution cases, another group given contingency solution cases. And then the third process, uh, they are given um, new case which are solved by either negotiating principles. Now, in the result of their study, um, the, the subjects were forced to pay attention to the structural features in order for them to enhance their ability to solve the other problems. Kasi nga, iba't ibang problems yung binigay sa kanila doon. So, to be able to do that, they went back doon sa um, yung mga previous problems na binigay sa kanila in order to uh, try and solve the current problem that they are given. So, how do a how do we apply analogy in the real world? So, what we do, or sabi ni um, Kevin Dunbar is, we have this analogical paradox wherein um, it, we see that it's quite difficult to apply in laboratory research, which is true, medyo mahirap mag-isip ng, ano, ng uh, conditions that will help us to really see how this application of analogies happen uh, but in a laborat laboratory setting however in the real world um people really uses or people really use analogies in uh, their uh, day-to-day uh, day activities and then nakita nila yon in the in vivo research wherein they observe people to determine how they solve problems in real world situations so it's they with this type of research they are not really given um, a certain problem and condition diba ganun kasi sa experimental approach eh, which is usually done in laboratory research so the advantages of this one is that it captures the um the the thinking in naturalistic settings however um the problem is that it can be time consuming and it would be difficult to isolate uh, a lot of specific variables kasi syempre dahil wala kang ang control in this kind of uh, situation or in this kind of research there would be a lot of confounding variables and aside from that you really have to observe the group from the start to the finish of the the yeah the setup or yung kanilang uh, iniisip na gagawin talagang babantayan mo sila so so with biologists and immunologists they have seen by using this type of research that during lab meetings they use analogies about 3 to 15 times in just uh, one hour of meeting so yun yung na um na analyze nila do sa data nila from an in vivo research. 
which is true naman talaga kasi uh, when when we have meetings, ganun din kami mag-meeting sa department. So, sasabihin ko, ah, parang katulad nung ginawa natin nung ganun. So, we use analogy in, in, in that sense. So, pag mag-make kami ng suggestion for uh, a certain problem or a certain goal that we want to meet, So, sometimes we would bring up uh, past uh, things that we have done na ganun, halos ganun din yung um, setup. So, we're using the surface and structural features in order to make that analogy. So, by doing so, we're able to come up with uh, more uh, concrete actions kung paano namin uh, ma-achieve yung goal na sinet namin. So, I think that is the same with you guys whenever you have uh, group meetings for group activities, di ba? Sabi niyo, oh, paano ba natin ginawa? Siguro gawin na lang natin yun ng ganun katulad nung nakaraan, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, pretty much you're doing analogies in order to uh, solve the problem that you are faced with. Okay, so with uh, Bo Christensen and Christian uh, Sean, we have they have uh, recorded meetings of design engineers for creating new plastic products for medical applications. So, um, their problem was how to create a container that would hold a small weak liquid. For a few minutes before uh, before it falls apart, so from their you uh, know their uh, observation, they have seen that these engineers have um, used analogy for about every five minutes. So ganon ka ganon ka uh, daming beses nila ginamit yung uh, an analogical approach to solve um, problems. Um, Because these are design engineers, so they have a lot of designs in the previous experiences that they um, that they try to uh, bring up again. Kasi nga, may similarity siya doon sa uh, current problem nila or current goal that they're trying to achieve. Okay, so how do experts solve problems? So experts, when we call these experts, these are people who by devoting a large amount of time to learning about the field and practicing and applying that learning. So um, like for example, you are already a graduate in psychology, you are already um, practicing in the field and doing research in the field. So pretty much you are an expert in psychology. So... <coughs> Um, and then definitely there will be a difference between how uh, an expert in the field or how a practitioner in the field of psychology and a student of psychology would solve problems so for um, for experts usually they solve problems faster with high success rate more than the novice or people who are just beginners and or do not have um, extensive training as uh, the experts and this is because experts of course um, possesses more knowledge about their field so this is why in the setup in their setup in school diba, um, or in in my class in particular i don't i don't ask the students to Uh, to do reporting kasi nga especially dun sa ano upside psychological assessment I don't ask my students to do reporting kasi nga since I'm the expert mas mapapaliwanag ko siya ng mas maayos uh, unlike with a novice na parang first time niya palang ma-encounter yung mga ganong concept So, it would be difficult for the, the novice to really explain and come up with proper analogies or proper examples doon sa concept na tinatry niyang i-explain. So, um, with that being said, diba, pag, pero pagbalik na rin naman natin yung sitwasyon, like for example, uh, with a lot of social media nowadays, the experts, guys, would be you. 
Hindi ko alam kung ano yung mga trending ngayon. Hindi ko alam yung mga slang ngayon na nakukuha nyo rin sa social media. So, those things, I I don't know those things. Um, but you are the experts in those fields. So, um, to test this idea, we have uh, Chase and Simon who had um, an experiment wherein they had uh, chess masters uh, do a performance. Um, and then from what they have seen is that the experts were able to reproduce the position of the pieces on the chessboard after looking at the arrangement for like 5 seconds. Um, and then... Um, Experts have excelled in this task when arranged in an actual game position. Kasi nga, these are chess masters. However, what they have seen is that the experts are more or less like novice when the positions are arranged in a random fashion. So, kumbaga parang totally out of the blue yung pagkaka-arrange sa kanila. <clears throat> Okay, so this is an ex um, uh, a figure of how the, the game happened. So, in an actual game position of the chess pieces, ayan, this is because they have been exposed to a lot of um, uh, many chess game patterns before. So, they were able to solve that problem immediately. Walang problema sa kanila. Whereas with the beginner, they don't really understand it yet or they are just uh, trying to really study ano bang mga uh, moves ng mga chess pieces na to. However, ayan, pag ni-random yung pagkaka-place ng mga chess pieces, um, ang nakita nila is that it, it halos parehas lang ng results ang master at ang beginner doon sa correct placements. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so moving on with another um, with another example. So according to um, a study done by Chi, we're in uh, there are twenty four uh, physics problems, and then it's a uh, uh, a problem between the experts or the professors versus the novice. Ang nakita niya dito is that the novice had sorted the problems based on similar objects. So, kumbaga, ganyan niya inorganize yung problem. So, inclined plane, so inclined plane, lahat ng problema dito. <clears throat> on the other hand, with the experts, they have sorted out the problems based on the similar physics principles. Like, for example, a uh, con conservation of energy so itong problem na to doon so dito ka dito ka dito ka so by doing so mas mabilis na na-solve nung um, expert yung problem because they have organized the <coughs> the problems better in the, or they have organized the problem in as according to the principles that they have already mastered and like with novices, since mga estudyante pa nga lang sila, hindi pa nila totally master yung, um, yung mga physics principles. Okay. Um, aside from that, they also saw that the, uh, the pace is about um, slow in the beginning. Um, but then it gradually uh, becomes faster as they understand the problem better. So, which is true naman. And uh, this is an effective approach to the problem unlike with organizing it uh, to, uh, using the basics. <clears throat> and this is what you will learn or this is what or how you will uh, resolve uh, problems in psychology once you are already um an expert in the field or a practitioner in the field. <clears throat> okay, so um, aside from that, they all ha um, they have also seen that the expertise actually is only an advantage in an expert's 
specialty. So, kapag ano ka doon, kumbaga, kapag expert ka doon, bentahin mo talaga yon. However, ayan, the, the difference between the experts and novices only appear within the experts field. So, kaya nga katulad na sinabi ko kanina, when it comes to the social media, yung mga anong trending ngayon, I I don't know uh, those things because um, I'm not an expert on social media use. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm not good at. Pero pag tinanong mo ko, what test would be good for this one, this one, this one, I can immediately answer you in a heartbeat. Sabihin mo lang sa akin kung ano yung uh, paggagamitan, ano yung ano, because that is my expertise. <clears throat> So, with this one, um, uh, James Voss had uh, tried to test it using real-world problems. Um, and what he have seen is that uh, expert political scientists had performed best. Um, and um, while expert chemists performed poorly as a novice, as novice political scientists. Kasi nga, um, this is not their forte. And uh, being expert actually is not all that. It's uh, there is a disadvantage when confronting a problem that requires flexible thinking. So, uh, like for example, I had because uh, nag um, parang set up natin sa thesis na sa department is that um, the the students will be a. a, a assigned um, advisors na may knowledge doon sa field. However, since konti pa nga lang yung mga professors natin or hindi pa ganun, karami yung mga professors sa, sa, sa department natin. So, we were given um, some advices that totally wala kaming alam. So, like for example, I had a, a group who came to me na more on social media ang kanilang ano ang kanilang uh, topic, research topic. My problem with, with that is that uh, I do use social media. However, I'm not uh, I'm not an expert with social media, particularly Twitter. Because I only use Twitter to look for, ano, <laughs> for my stan purposes para lang sa pagpa-fan girl ko. So, I don't really use it other than that particular function. So, with that being said, I'm not an expert on um, social media use, especially in um, uh, promoting mental health. I, I don't do that. I, uh, I, I'm not really well versed on how to uh, make my influence larger to my audience when it comes to that platform. So, um with that one, ayun, medyo nahirapan ako doon sa pag advice sa kanila. And then, I told them that I can only advise you only on that uh, extent ng mental health. But if it if it will require something na parang algorithms ng uh, Twitter, uh, definitely that's out of my um, area. <clears throat> so, sabi ko, I think you might need to have, uh, you need to ask uh, someone else's help further in order for you to uh, understand it better or in order for you to maximize the platform better. So, yun yung sinabi ko sa kanila. Which is, um, the good thing is that they followed. Kasi nga, um, I admitted naman my uh, shortcoming on that part. <clears throat> and also, with the, no, with, um, the qualitative type of research, Kasi as you have seen so far guys, diba, the, the experiments that we're doing, these are more or less uh, quant uh, qualitative. The data that I were giving or the experiment that we're um, doing in line with the, um, <clears throat> in line with the uh, lessons that we discuss. So I deal better with... Um, quantitative data rather than the qualitative data. Since their approach was qualitative, sabi ko sa kanila, I think you have to have an extra, um, you need to have an extra, um, what do you call this? 
uh, extra learning in order for you to maximize um, or in order for you to understand how you're going to present this data because uh, sabi ko rin sa kanila, I, I don't deal with um, <clears throat> I don't deal with yet kumbaga with um, qualitative data, pinag-aaralan ko pa lang siya, so um, and then, iba pa yung ano yung ginawa nyo, or ibang, galing sa ibang type ng data yung ginawa nyo, which is totally out of my um, ano pa, knowledge pa yun yung sinabi ko sa kanila So, yun. so yun yung um, disadvantage doon. It's not always good to be an expert kasi uh, the expert also tends to be at a loss uh, when they are confronted with problems that requires flexible thinking. And when we say flexible thinking, this is more or less thinking out of uh, outside of the box. Okay, now, with creative problem solving, so kanina, an, uh, using analogy for problem solving, ito naman, creative problem solving. So, when we talk about creativity, we have, um, or uh, creativity when it comes to, uh, ano ba to? Uh, problem solving, ito nga yung thinking out of the box na sinabi ko kanina. So, um, creativity is also seen as a divergent thinking wherein it is thinking that is open-ended which involves large number of potential solutions. So, according to James Kaufman, this is the cornerstone of creativity but not all creativity can be divergent. Okay? So, um, Sorry, na fan girl na naman ako. Ah. Pero in in BTS, the the most uh, creative person there is is uh, a V actually. Um, kasi minsan, uh, although Nam June has the highest IQ in the in the group, V shows a lot of potential for uh, problem solving. Kaya to, to the extent at times na minsan nag-cheat siya sa mga games. Pero if you would look at it in another way, it is a divergent thinking. Also, I think um, Jean shows that. Parang uh, yung may isa kasi silang ano na, tina, may mga tinatago silang ano, dapat hindi makita nung, nung mga rest of the members. Okay, now what creativity may mga requirements siya <laughs> of course so creativity is something that should be useful or must be useful um, and creativity is something that is made by uh, people that is in some way novel as well um, has a potential value or utility So, we have, of course, the concept of practical creativity wherein uh, a good example of this one is the creative analogical problem solving. So, um, a good example of this one is the development of Velcro. Diba? Velcro was developed because of uh, this particular experience. So, nag-hike siya. Di ba meron tayong mga plants na pag, yung pag, sa probinsya ko to na-encounter eh. Pag lumakad ka sa damuhan, tapos naka-pants ka, or may certain pants siya na type ng tela na dinidikitan. And then, ang pag alis mo na dun sa damuhan na yon, makikita mo dami ng parang mga nakadikit sa yung ano, uh, it's a plant pero <laughs> sa mga nakadikit siya <laughs> so nahumok siya sa ano mo sa yung uh, uh, damit so that is how or that was how velcro was developed after that um, particular experience and then also uh, George Odon uh, wherein he designed a device um based on uh, sticking a plastic bag um, in order to pull out the uh, the the cork out of the ano, the bottle so parang ganun din na na ano ba to na 
na, na invent yung um yung device para sa delivery so there are actually a lot of things that we're using now that is um that was born out of practical creativity now think of those things ano kaya yung mga um, mga bagay-bagay na yon na ginagamit natin ngayon um, or something we cannot live without and it was born out of practical creativity. So, in a creative problem solving, um, it's not always parang uh, initial goal and then uh, the uh, initial objective or the initial problem and then the goal uh, per se. Um, usually, it's a trial and error development. So, like for example, the airplane, the invention of the airplane, it took the Wright brothers about four years to really um, have uh, uh, an an airplane as we know it today. Yung talagang lilipad at hindi magkakrash at hindi papatay ng tao. Okay, so this is an... Uh, a figure that shows us how creative problem solving is usually uh, how it usually happens so we have the first stage here wherein there is problem generation divided into problem finding and fact finding so there is a problem that exists and then ano ba yung mga nag exist dyan na pwede mong gawin diba? next is problem formulation so um they define more sure, just like how we do things in our experiments we define the experiment a problem and then the idea finding and ba yung assumptions natin based on that experiment problem or the hypothesis based on that experiment problem and then next is the evaluation and selection that is for stage three the problem solving and then the planning um how are you going to do it diba? you're going to plan how you're going to s solve the problem etc etc and then a uh, stage four would be solution implementation uh selling the idea na, oh, this might be a good way to approach it uh, or let's do this blah 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 and then taking action it in itself na ayun gagawin mo na nga ano yung mga naisip mong paraan para gawin yung or para bigyan ng solution yung problem so generating ideas um what they have or Steven Smith had provided examples to people before they solve a problem and from what he see is that they um, influence the nature of the solution of these people so uh, he did it by inventing sketching or describing new toys however um, by doing so it had in it in it had inhibited the creativity of the uh, people or of his respondents. So, meron siyang, meron siyang group na ayon binigyan niya ng um, examples. And then, may isa siyang grupo na walang example. So, ang nangyari, nakita niya dun sa example group, they incorporated the features that they saw from the example doon sa, sa product. So, nagkaroon dito ng functional fixedness. Unlike doon sa walang example, uh, they did uh, better in terms of creativity. So, uh, yun yung nangyayari doon. Um, kaya, if you would remember your, um, your second experiment, uh, I didn't really give you any guide questions there because I don't want you to have functional fixedness pero uh, of course it doesn't uh, it's not totally problem free kasi nga so far ang nakikita ko was that uh, all over the place yung ano yung um, kanyang uh, mga discussion so ang hirap tuloy ngayon mag check so yun yung nangyayari that's why it's taking me long to uh, give it back to you and then we also have uh, the study by um, Fink Ronald Fink um, 
which is the creative cognition, a technique to train people to think creatively. So they are um, going to select three uh, random objects um, to create a new object. So, from this, nakita natin yung mga pre-inventive forms like ideas that precede the creation of a finished creative product. So, just like how we uh, use, yun nga yung katulad yung nauna kong sinabi, um, yung friend ko na ginamit niya yung kutsara to open a bottle of beer. So, that is uh, creative problem solving. Um, the, since um, he chose that particular object that was not really meant to be used like that to be used in another way so there is the need to develop further uh, before becoming a useful invention so this is, was what seen um, in this particular studies and then as well as uh, as well as the fact that people tend to come up with creative uses for preventive objects they had created themselves so um, this is somehow how similar to a generation effect so again like with the example of the spoon now these are some of the things that we have to consider regarding creativity um, it's good to be creative however what the studies show is that highly creative people are also more prone to illnesses uh, than those who are not that creative so this is why if you would go back sa history sa art history nyo a lot of um, the artists there suffer from some sort of mental health uh, problems like for example um uh Van Gogh. Van Gogh is one of my favorite painters. Diba? He had he had depression. He was also um, he was also suspected to have schizophrenia or a psychotic breakdown at some point in his life. Kaya nga niya uh, kinot off yung sarili niyang tenga uh, because of that uh, psychotic breakdown. Um and then also some musicians we also have musicians who are very uh, creative or very artistic who are known to suffer from some sort of mental health disorder so i think one of them uh, i'm not sure if you know kurt cobain kurt cobain is the uh, lead singer of nirvana he was known to suffer from depression before he committed suicide um and then sino pa ba yung mga well-known uh, artists ah hit ledger hit ledger um the the one who who portrayed joker the uh chef's kiss na joker uh, i'm not sure if you have watched that um batman but uh sa lahat ng joker sa kanya ko pinaka natakot sa kanya talaga yung pinakamagandang joker as far as I'm concerned um, he also had a psychological um, breakdown a mental health uh, problem that caused him to uh, commit suicide later on in his life okay so in a similar study um, particularly in a Swedish study, is that uh, close relatives of people with schizophrenia, uh, schizoaffective disorder, and bipolar disorder are people who have um, creative mind and open mind. So, it's good. It, it comes with the good side and it comes with the downside, just like any other thing. Um... So, people who have a uh, higher level of um, creative intelligence have a higher average chance of being in a creative profession. Like, for example, an artist, um, a musician, a painter, yung mga nasa arts na um, uh, type ng work. Or kung hindi man arts, yung uh, technology type ng work we're in invention uh, this is this is also something that needs high creativity 
However, kung makikita mo din, if you would look at their um, family history closely, there are a uh, history of mental illnesses running in their family. Mm. Aside from that, uh, they are seen to um, have this latent inhibition, uh, which is uh, the capacity to screen out stimuli that are considered irrelevant. So, ayan. Uh, and um, in schizophrenia, they have this one. They have the latent inhibition impaired. Uh, although it enhances their uh, creativity, it also enhances the possibility yung, yung mga, ano nila, mga symptoms nila. Tumataas yung... Um, yung uh, yung paglabas ng symptoms nila. Okay. So, people with low LI has a high uh, high creative achievement score um, and reduced LI uh, increasing unfiltered stimuli available to unconscious um, <clears throat> awareness increases the possibility of creating useful combination of the stimuli so this is why uh, there's a japanese painter i forgot her name uh, she has schizophrenia but she's a well-known uh, painter she's a well uh, celebrated painter all of her um paintings are the results of her hallucinations or most of her paintings are the results of her hallucinations so pag nagkakaroon siya ng psychotic breakdown nagpe-paint siya doon niya nilalabas and then, ayun, uh, nagiging art yung kanyang um, symptoms. Which is good. Um, <clears throat> so, what type of disorder can tell us about uh, creativity? So, we have this uh, savant syndrome or savant. Uh, and usually, these are people with autism or other mental disorders which are able to achieve extraordinary feats like for example um, if you would tell them uh, a day of the week at any randomly picked date they can tell you what happened on that date or they can be a great uh, artist or mathematician um, they also have uh, a top-down inhibition as well as damage to the anterior temporal loop. Now, connected with this, uh, a good a good movie to watch uh, that has Savant Syndrome is The Rain Man. The Rain Man uh, starring Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. This is a good, uh, this is based on a true story. Ayun, merong Savant Syndrome doon yung kapatid niya. Uh, may autism uh, sub, Savant Syndrome. And then, um, pag binigyan mo siya ng libro, kahit phone directory na, na memorize niya, all of the details inside that book. Okay, so furthermore, ayan, so we have the nine dots problem. Uh, <clears throat> so, I don't think we have to uh, discuss this further, no? Um, but this is the usual, yung parang mga brain games na pinapakita sa atin. Ayan. For straight lines that pass through nine dots without lifting your pen from the paper. So, nagagawa naman siya, pero mas nagagawa siya ng mga taong uh, mas creative uh, kesa sa iba. Um, and then also, nagagawa rin siya ng mga tao na may uh, uh, similar experience doon sa same problem na yun. So, remember yung analogies, right? And that's it for uh, the discussion of problem solving and creativity.